Hi everybody, so we're going to talk about weathering. So physical weathering is the breakdown of rocks over time through physical processes. This can happen due to water, as over here with this canyon, or wind over here um, with this interesting feature with the hole in the rock, plants, where you can see this plant growing into the rock, heat, and also animals. All right, so for example, root pry, like we can see with the plant, is when roots grow into the rocks and break them apart. Wind abrasion is when wind blows sand at rocks and breaks pieces off. And eventually you can lead, it can lead to very interesting shapes and holes in the rock. And water abrasion is when water runs across rocks and smooths them out and cuts down into them, which can create um, canyons like we can see right here. So this process is a very slow process. It takes a long time for it to build up to a level that we can actually see. So as I was saying, this process is slow. It takes a long time for it to build up to a level that we can actually see. Root pry can take years to decades, but something like wind abrasion or water abrasion can take millions of years to create holes in rocks, uh, to create interesting rock features, to create a canyon. So this is a very slow process. You can compare that to something like a volcanic eruption or a landslide, which happen, you know, which can affect land in minutes. So geologically, these are very slow processes. All right, um, these also affect small amounts of land at a time. Okay, so over millions of years, they can affect large amounts of land. Um, but something like root pry only affects one rock. Okay, so that only affects a small amount of land. This particular example of wind abrasion only created one hole in the rocks. But then this huge canyon, while it only broke away a little bit at a time over and over, now you have this canyon that can be hundreds of miles long and is hundreds of feet deep. Okay, so small amounts of land or large amounts of land, depending on the scale and depending on the amount of time that's passed. So if you think about something like this, abrasion, only grains of sediment were broken off at a time. Um, but then you can end up with big features. And root pry, a tree takes years to grow, a tree big enough to break into a rock, so it affects just a small amount at a time. So then in comparison, we've got chemical weathering. Chemical weathering happens when chemical reactions break down rocks, eating away at them so they get smaller and pieces break away. You can see some pictures here. So for example, there's rusting when oxygen reacts with iron in the rocks. And you can see this rock has gotten rusty and it looks like bits are starting to potentially flake off. You've got hydrolysis when water reacts with minerals in rocks that can create these interesting features in caves and can create the cave itself as the water eats away, reacts with minerals in the rock and eats away at them. This is also added to by solution weathering where weak acids are mixed in with the water that are created when water reacts with um, say carbon dioxide, for example, and you end up with the water being slightly acidic and that reacts with the rocks and eats away at them. Um, this, these acid reactions um, also can come from plants. So these are lichens and they grow on rocks um, and they put acids down into the rocks, um, which can start to break the rock apart. All right, um, so chemical weathering like physical weathering is also slow. Hydrolysis and solution weathering can take millions of years to form a cave. Rusting can take millions of years to actually break rocks down. At first, all you'd see is that the rocks start to turn red. So chemical weathering only affects a small amount of rocks at a time, just at the level of molecules. Over millions of years, though, it can lead to large effects. Okay, so that is physical and chemical weathering. I hope that helped.